Hi, I'm Corbett Lunsford from Green Dream Group in Chicago. On behalf of the Building Performance Workshop, we'd like to demonstrate for you the mechanics behind the Minneapolis Duck Blaster. I don't know if you have felt like a doofus when you're setting this up, but I have before, so I want to make sure that you avoid that. This is a very confusing piece of equipment. We're going to make sure that you understand why you set it up the way that you do. So when you open the box, what you see here is we've got, first of all, the fan. The fan is the most important thing, obviously. The fan has two sides. It has an inside and an outside. The outside is just like on the blower door, the side you can't do anything with. It's a metal grate, all right? The pre-fan side, where the air gets sucked into the fan, is open, and you can see the motor here. This is where you're going to be messing with stuff. This is the side, generally, that's going to be facing you if you're going to be doing certain types of tests. Now, if I had the duct system here and I hooked it up this way, this would be a depressurization test because I'd be sucking air out of the ducts. And this way, obviously, would be a pressurization test. Uh, we'll talk about some of the things that you're going to do with that connection point. Over here we've got the snorkel. The snorkel is just a length of flex duct. Um, it's used to connect the fan to the ductwork. We have two flanges that uh, specifically do that job. This is the rectangular flange. This is the one that hooks up to the ductwork. And then we've got the circular flange, which obviously hooks up to the fan because it's round just like the fan is. The circular uh, flange has a hose on it that we're going to discuss in more detail as well. We have the connectors here that uh, we connect these pieces together with. We also have the packing material. This often gets discarded by people who don't know exactly what it is. This is, in fact, a stand for our circular fan. So it doesn't roll away on us. And this piece is called the flow straightener. We're going to use this in the depressurization test that we do. You only use it in very specific situations, and I'll tell you exactly when those are. We have the calibration plates. Just like on the blower door, we have uh, flow restriction rings. We've got ring three, two, and one. Um, we'll use those uh, when we want to test a tighter system. And we have the duct mask material. We can either use duct mask, which comes from the manufacturer, in this case, Energy Conservatory. This stuff, in case you're not the purchaser at your company, is $150 for six rolls of this. So you want to be, you know, thrifty with it. Uh, this stuff is plastic wrap that has a little bit of adhesive on it. This is three for 10. So if we're doing a depressurization test, which is a test I always like to run because we can use this, then you can, you can uh, get away with a little bit more cost effectiveness. We have the motor drive, just like on the blower door. And then we've got the manometer and the hoses. Now setting it up initially involves sealing up all of the intentional openings between the ductwork and the house, which in this case, we've got supply registers and we've got return registers. This is our tiny duct system that we use to simulate this test. Obviously, uh, it's accurate, except that there would be an air handler here at the center of the system because that's at the heart of every forced air system. Um, but overlooking that, we're going to use the central return. Now, we use the return to connect the duct blaster to because if you think about it, a duct system is like an octopus. There is the heart of the octopus, which is, like we said, the air handler. And then branching out from that are all of the supply and return branches. Uh, if you were to set up the duct blaster at the end of one of those branches, at a supply run or at a return that's far from the air handler, then you'd have to pressurize or depressurize all the way down to the heart and then all the way back out to the other limbs. That's pretty uh, inefficient. So what we want to do instead is connect it at the heart, at the air handler, at the closest return, and a return specifically because it's big. You want to be able to push a lot of air into or out of the duct system, so you need a big opening to do that. Um, so that's why we chose this. We use duct mask here. I want to do a depressurization test, so that's why I'm using my uh, cheap stuff here, just my plastic wrap. Now, I, I can only do a depressurization test with this material because it's going to suck the material onto the duct system, which is good. That's what I want uh, in order to create an airtight seal. If I was to pressurize this, it would blow right off. So I would have to use duct mask for that. We're going to do that in a second. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and connect this snorkel to the ductwork and then tighten it down. And now we're going to connect the snorkel to the fan. Now, we're obviously in depressurization mode, so I want to have the fan side of this on the inside, and I want to be blowing air out of the ductwork. Uh, before I close this up, I need to do uh, two things in depressurization mode. These are very specific. This is the one time when I'm going to use my flow straightener. So we use the flow straightener because we're having all of the air that's going through this highly calibrated piece of scientific testing equipment coming through this really messy, kinky ductwork. Um, we want the flow, when it hits the fan, to be going straight through the fan and not to be coming in at an angle or have turbulence 
uh, along with it. So we're going to put this in. There's one specific place where it sits. And now that that's installed, we can go ahead and close this up. If I wanted to put a flow plate in here as well to restrict the flow, now is the time to do that. Since I know exactly what number I need to get on my duct tightness because I'm doing 2012 IECC standards or 2009 or Energy Star, I know which ring to use. Um, also, since this is a tiny duct work, I'm just going to put the smallest ring on. Now I'm going to put it in like this because this is a nice aerodynamic opening for the air to get sucked through. I wouldn't install it like this because that would not be aerodynamic. Okay, and now we simply attach this. Now we simply attach this together. Now that I have my snorkel connecting my fan to my ductwork, I've got the ductwork all sealed up, and I have my flow straightener and my calibration ring, or my flow plate, uh, set up inside the snorkel here, um, I have to set up my manometer. Now, the manometer uh, is a complicated piece of equipment in and of itself, and if you need a review on manometer mechanics, please visit our video with that title in this series. Uh, we've got two sides of the manometer. Obviously, we've got the pressure and the flow for this test. So on the pressure side, what we're going to need to do is the name of the test tells you what goes on the input tab. So since the name of the test is the duct tightness test, we're going to measure the pressure in the ductwork with reference to the house where we're standing. And if we're not standing in the house, then we would want to reference the house. For example, if we're in an attic, for example. Uh, and on the flow side, we're going to want to measure the flow in the fan, obviously, since that's our main tool that we're using. So we're going to connect this tap on the housing of the duct blaster, just like on the blower door, to the input side of the manometer. And in depressurization mode, this is the one time when we need to do this. Our pre-fan measurement is now inside our snorkel. Now, because we did that, we're going to have to reference that pre-fan number because essentially what the flow measurement is on a manometer is it's a differential pressure reading of pre-fan and post-fan. So we've got the post-fan with this right here. We're going to need the pre-fan by referencing what's going on in here, which is why we use now this hose that's on the outside of this assembly. And I attach the hose that's connecting with the flange here to the reference of channel B. So now my flow in the fan with reference to pre-fan, which is the way that this is wired up. It's actually exactly the same as on the blower door if you were to do a pressurization test with the blower door. So just to review, the two things you have to remember if you're doing a depressurization test, which is the configuration we have right now, we have to use the flow straightener inside the snorkel and we have to use this tap on the outside of the flange to connect to the reference side of the flow. Uh, those are the two things. Now let's flip this around and do a pressurization test quickly. Now we've flipped the fan around so that we're blowing into the duct system. You can see that the, the motor side of the fan is on the outside here. So the flow is coming through the fan this way. We don't need the flow straightener because the air is moving straight into the fan from here. Uh, we don't need the flow straightener, so we've taken that out. It's no longer inside the snorkel. And we don't need to use this tap on the outside of the uh, fan flange because the pre-fan is now in the room with us, which is here. So we've disconnected that hose from the manometer. We only now are measuring the pressure in the ducts with reference to the room where we're standing and the flow in the fan with the pre-fan side open to the room just like this is. Now, if we want to be uh, restricting the flow, just like we did before, we install the flow plate on the outside, on the pre-fan side, always. The easiest way to remember is that the flow calibration plate always faces in. So this protrusion never sticks out like that. That would be silly. This is the way that we want to go. So we always go in toward the fan. Uh, the most elegant way to attach this, by the way, is to get your strip your attachment strip laying down flat with the fan sitting in it, then seat the other thing you want to attach, generally the, the plate, here, and then you can attach it like so. It's kind of a clumsy technique no matter how you look at it. Now that we have the flow plate in place, we have no flow strainer, and we're reconnected with the duct system. Obviously, this plastic 
wrap would have to be replaced with actual duct mask, which is going to stick a lot more readily to the drywall and the duct uh, register. We can simply run our system up to 25 pascals using the motor drive, which connects here as well, and we would have completed our test. Now, if you need a review on how to actually run a duct air tightness test, please visit our video called Duct Blaster Testing. In the meantime, I hope that this has been helpful for you and clarified some of the nitty-gritty details about this test. Please tune in next time. This has been Building Performance Workshop. Mm -hmm.